And I leaned out the window and I politely said, hey, kid, hey, get off the street. <laughs> so the girl got off the street, stepped up on the curb, and the guy said, get one, and I'm out the door. <laughs> Unfortunately, Tim's wife would not stop the car. <laughs>
And I, I can't use those words in, in court. Yes, I've heard every word there possibly is in Judge Judy. Tell me, uh, <laughs> tell me the words. No, 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 I can't. No, no, no. Looks at me and says, "What did you say?" And I said, "I called him a pus sucking diphthong." <laughs>
So I, I'm in my bathrobe and my pajama bottoms, which have one of my role models, Grumpy of the Seven Dwarfs, <laughs> and my slippers, and I put a little, little refuse in our can, and I'm taking the sun. It's that kind of day. It's a nice day, and I'm feeling good. And I'm standing there, and right down the street comes a long car. Now, it's not a van, it's not an SUV, it's the sort of car that women who belong to the Hadassah drive. How many of you do not get the reference? Please raise your hands. Uh, oh, throw me your mother to again. Okay. Uh, an organization of Jewish ladies, like the B'nai Brit, is Hadassah. Hadassah ladies are all, as my mama used to say, Baba Muslims. Baba Muslims is a woman who has a house, everything is in right order. But my mother didn't mean it that way, needed to clean as a pin. What my mother meant was she thinks her shit don't stink. That's what my mother meant. So here are, here's a car with fins. The front end arrives about 12 minutes before the end. And it slides to a screeching halt right in front of me, this close. And the window, down goes the window, and inside are four women with blue hair. <laughs> and they have obviously been past my house before, and are obviously intrigued by it. Because one of the women leans out, and I am mocking her in the way I say this, but you'll get the idea. What is this place? <laughs> Because it takes a lot less time to do this 
together. My Lord Jesus, will it be I? And then Jesus goes, Maybe me, Jesus! Okay. This is what I told you the other day that you fell apart of. 
Do you think you can get them to laugh? And I said, sure. And I said, fuck, get up here. I walk up there, I turn to the audience, and I say, why is Michael Jackson like 49 year olds? Because there's 40 of them. Thank you. <laughs>
Starbucks over the music they were playing. There was no one else in the place but us. We said, can you turn the music down? And he said, huh? I said, can you turn the music down? And he said, huh? I said, can you turn the music down? She said, uh, 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 no, I don't think. I said, we're sitting over here in the corner. There's six of us at the only table with six chairs. Well, you can sit somewhere else. I said, where? You have a speaker every four feet. <laughs> where would you like to sit on the curb outside? <laughs> and I said, can you turn it down a little, please? And they were playing this awful Starbucks music by musicians who can't get a gig with a real label. <laughs> so they so they knock it off to the Starbucks, and, and it was a guy who sounded exactly like what we threw Bob Dylan out of the White Horse for sounding like. Tommy Clancy and the make uh, Tommy uh, Tommy Baker with the Clancy Brothers, and I pitched fucking uh, what the fuck is his name? Robert Zimmerman. Zimmerman. We pitched out on the fucking Hudson Hudson Avenue. Uh, I, I just come from sucking on the chest of Francisco Houston. No! Oh, I'm not going to go to the hospital. He's not dead. He listen to what he played. But ain't many. The motherfucker to cool. He would go and hover over old dying. Uh, no, <laughs> no one talked to you about it. You brought it up. Anyhow, the guy sounded like I'm thinking, who incorporates? Who incorporates Starbucks? I said, yes, you need to play this guy with the auto tune. Kazoo. Well, it's the only place on Long Island you can get a wrong Kong to Momo. Well, the best part was that Alexa, her daughter, was oh, sitting right there. Alexa, I walked away from the counter and went to sit down. Susan, sit down. Sit down. Go to your happy place. Go to your happy place. And when I went there, it was me inside screaming with the ass.
Were you cool? Like this. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's like a great book from Fairfield Wright. Did any, anyone who is not worried is simply unaware of what's going on. <laughs> and I feel the same way, but then all of a sudden he said, you think everyone is another gag with you? That's why when I talk to people on the street, I'll walk up to them and I'll say, so how's your family? You know, they go, what, 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 what? And I thought that was a very egalitarian thing. In that, I assume everybody is as well read as I. Everybody is as quick as I. Everybody is as spirited as I. <laughs> everybody is at least my equal, if not my better. And somebody said, no, nah, it's just arrogance that you think they're like that. And I said, well, if it's arrogance, then you've got to say that I think I'm better than people. I said, well, you do think you're better. I said, no, I don't think you're better than the asshole. <laughs> now, how many of you are better than the asshole? <laughs> about the general population, and what, what puts me in mind of it is that uh, a couple months ago we were watching, we got pulled into a quiz show called uh, uh, Power of Ten, yeah. uh, and they had one question, it, it's all percentage stuff, and the question was, how many people, what percentage of people believe that Elvis is still alive? <laughs> 40%.
And the guy was having dinner with started in on, they could work if they wanted to work, they're deadbeats, they this, they that. A, it wasn't a black person, it was a white person. So the they that he was talking about obviously meant everybody but him, I guess. And he went on and on and on, and I said, you got to stop. Please stop. Be serious. Don't say what anyone would stop. And he went on and on and on, and I said, continue. And I'd come 3,000 miles to have dinner with him. And I've known him a long time, and I said, if you don't stop, I said, what you will see next is my back walking out the front door. Ah, you wouldn't have got it. And I got up, and I walked out of the restaurant, and didn't talk to him for six years. <laughs> Which hurt me because he's a wonderful man. He's done me many favors. I've done him a number of favors. He's a pal. He's like an alien from another world to me most of the time, but he's a pal. And he called me and he apologized. He called me and he apologized. That's all. Well, Slate was clean. But we made a vow never, never to talk anything that deals with the real world. <laughs> <laughs> so we talk about writing, and we talk about writers we know who are dead, and we talk about him getting out of his divorce, we talk about his lawsuit, blah, 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 blah. He's a good, he's a good guy. I'll be having dinner with him on Monday night. Hey, can you come? Are you a member of the Stunning Club? No. That's true of your belly button. <laughs> 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 Somebody put this gag thing up there that they were growing kittens inside of the oh, yeah. yeah. And people were out of it, and it was so obviously a joke to anyone with even half a brain. And he's underlying what are you
have to. I, I have the best life of anybody I know. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm not entitled to this Mr. moment. I am exactly and precisely who I wish to be. I, I cannot say, you know, I've got a race, or I've had bad luck, or gee, if I had done this and I hadn't done that, or my mommy locked me in the closet, that's why I'm a serial killer. No, no, none of that shit. Everything that I have ever done in my life, I have done. I'm absolutely and totally responsible. I can't blame anyone else, and I don't have to. I don't have to push it off on anyone else and say I owe it all to such and such. I did it myself, and I'm responsible. And I find now that I live in a world, and for many of you who I see have a little gray hair and uh, gravity is for you too, I find that I despise the world. I despise the world so much that on a day when I hear on the news, the equivalent of this, which I heard one day, and this is the one that comes to mind most, it's a trope. Uh, a little boy had had chemo in a middle school somewhere, and they shaved off all his hair. And he went back to school, and when he went back to school, all the other kids had shaved their head, and the teacher too. And it made me cry. Because I thought, any species that is capable of painting the Sistine Chapel ceiling, that is capable of writing Moby Dick, that is capable of inventing Deflon Ouch, does not need novels by John Grisham, <laughs> McDonald's Toad Burgers, and uh, the Internet. And uh, it gave me hope that, like John Simon, who I think is a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant man, and also not a very affable man, and that's exactly the word I mean it to be, affable. Uh, every once in a while you feel maybe it shouldn't all be turned over the cockroaches. Give the human race another chance. Those times come less and less frequently for me. And I spend most of my days and nights in a state of outright, flagrant, or submerged and barely bubbling lunacy and anger. When I came out here and sat here, I had just come past the sports thing where the guy had called me a big one, and I went out the fucking car. <laughs> and if it hadn't been for Andrea keeping the car going, I would have taken the cops every time. And I, and I don't mean I would have thrown myself out on like a flounder and go, man, I'd have gone after him, man. I don't mean to damn I'm going to grab him and put him on that cement and put him on the fucking head and put him on the guava face. Nothing is. What do I think of the world? I've lived too long. No. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. I, didn't, I didn't say you'd like the answer. Staying out of your front door. Long time ago, I'm from England. I've been here 24 years. Yeah, I did get the stain out, but, but, but you can still see the. What he's talking about is that uh, I had written something about Star Trek somewhere, and uh, the day after they egged at my front door, <laughs> and, my, and my front door happens to be a work of art that was done by Mabel and Mylon Hutchinson, whose names you would not know, but they are the people who taught Louise Nevelson, who was America's greatest sculptor, uh, happened to be a woman, not <clears throat> greatest woman sculptor, but one of its greatest sculptors. Uh, remember the postage stamp. And Mabel and Mylon were in their 90s when they did my door, which is absolutely gorgeous and wonderful. And they ate them. And it's taking off the egg stains and scratching it. And, and, uh, and, and it's less than it was. You can't really tell that. I was in range when I read about it. But it's, uh, it, was, uh, it, was, it, was, uh, it, it was such a touchstone for me of, uh, you know, yeah, you're entitled to opinion as long as you're expressed. I got it. <laughs> Why, was it you? <laughs> I couldn't hurt wood like that. I couldn't hurt wood like that. I might need a wall. Yeah, come back. So what did you say about Star Trek? How the fuck do I know you? Yeah. <laughs> I wrote an article that said, uh, Luke Skywalker is a nerd and Darth Vader sucks what he ate. Weren't you talking about it on the radio or something like that? Yeah, something. it was somewhere or other. And it was... You know, anything. It's not all that difficult to piss off things. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you stop to think how demented people are. All right, you didn't like Star Wars? I like Star Wars. Hi. You go to your church, I'll go to my church, and I'll come and burn the cross on your lawn later. That's <laughs>
wonder. I bet fancy time on your wicked throne. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. You're rocking the boat. Wave came in, wash me overboard, and as I sank, and I hollered, someone save me, that's the moment I woke up, thank the Lord, for I stand myself, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. So sit down, sit down, no rock and roll. And the devil will drag you under with the soul so heavy you'll never float. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, you rock and roll. Sit down, sit down, sit down, you rock and roll. Sit down, sit down, My joke. Actually, I, I, I hope you I heard were, it in first. Were you, you were there tonight. I, I blew the punchline of my own joke. I saw it. It was fucking impossible. He didn't understand why there was a Hey, didn't hey, hey, you, Brit bitch, yes. don't be handing out my bread to other people. <laughs> You're handing out my bread to other people. It's, it's got him getting in his fat face right now. There's nothing happening. <laughs> <laughs> this is very shocking. <laughs> she does this to me. She has a filthy, disgusting habit of writing on a post it She pulled out a post and make a note for me, and then she puts it in her mouth. And when she hands it to me, it's... Ucky, it's Ucky. <laughs> and I'll say, you have paper okay. in your mouth again. She's like, oh. We don't have a pen in my house. But you leave little messages on my pillow. I hate little messages on my pillow. We're all out of cornflakes. F you. It took me two hours to figure out if I've used it for Felix Unger. <laughs> I love that play. I so wanted to be in a production of that play. I could do Oscar or Felix, either one. I, I deeply regret not seeing you as Richard Henry Lee. Oh, yeah. <laughs>